Well, joining me in the studio is Professor Dirk Brockmann from the Humboldt University here in Berlin. He's a theoretical physicist by training and he's currently developing models of the spread of infectious diseases like Ebola. Welcome to the show. Hi. Now, can you just explain very briefly what it is that you do? So we develop computer simulations, mathematical models that we put in the computer, uh, which we then use to make forecasts about the potential spread of infectious diseases on a global scale. For instance, you know, we look at the import risk of Ebola. Okay. Um, let's look at the figures that have just recently come out. The World Health Organization um, have said that they predict by the end of the year that there could be 10,000 cases of Ebola a week. Is that possible? Is that, uh, is that number correct? Those numbers are very plausible. If you think about an epidemic, an epidemic doubles numbers of infected every, you know, few weeks. For instance, Ebola doubles numbers every three weeks. So when you start with a thousand, you have then two thousand, four thousand, etc. That's an exponential growth. And currently we have ten thousand infections already, so that we have in the following weeks another ten thousand. That makes complete sense. We're talking about thousands here. I mean, I don't understand how this particular outbreak is so bad. There has been uh, at least 20 outbreaks since the virus was first identified and they were never this bad. Yes, so there are multiple factors that may play a role. One factor is, for instance, that now Ebola has made it to densely populated areas where people interact more frequently and then that helps the spread in the population. And previously it was mostly very remote villages. So, but there are other factors that may play a role. And I think experts are still trying to figure out what is so special about this uh, specific Ebola outbreak that we're seeing now. Um, it's mainly hit West Africa. What are the chances of it spreading like that in Europe or in America? So that's a question that we ask ourselves in my research team. So we have these computational models that take into account the worldwide air transportation networks. That's like 4,000 airports, 25,000 direct connections. And then we ask if someone with Ebola and boards a plane in West Africa, what's the like likelihood uh, of that person, you know, making it to the UK, to North America or to another European country? And which airports are most at risk then? That's very interesting. You may think that all the big airports play an equally important role in this, but it's not this way. Um, there are some airports, European airports like Charles de Gaulle in, in Paris or the London airports, uh, Gatwick and Heathrow and Brussels. Those uh, airports are central uh, in, in terms of spreading the risk of spread worldwide. And that is because there is some colonial footprint in the worldwide air transportation network. And these airports are strongly connected to West Africa. So what can they do then to combat that? So one idea might be to reduce traffic or, or you know, mobility in West Africa. But it turns out that our models say or predict that even if you reduce traffic by 90 percent, you only delay the whole process. So you actually have to go into West Africa and solve the problem there that will also most effectively reduce the risk of spread. Okay. Um, at the moment, do you think that there's an end in sight? At the moment, I don't see an end because we're still in this exponential growth phase, but I do hope that, you know, the new measures that are taken will, will uh, get the situation under control. Dirk Brockman, thank you very much for joining us here. You're welcome.